ladies and gentlemen. It's chess on day four of the Golden Goblet. I gotta admit, I'm always a little nervous. You would think that this is a game that I would be relatively confident going in. And I'm not unconfident, but uh, chess has had a moment in the internet since the last time we played in the Golden Goblet. Oh no, they know what they're doing. <laughs> I will say, this is like... I, I, any other game, I will send a tweet out and be like, hey, it would sure be nice if somebody would queue for uh, some chess right now. Or it'd be nice if somebody queued for some yacht dice, for example. This was the only time where I was like, I'm not doing that. I don't want to get a try hard. If I'm going to lose, that's fine. It happens. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to send out a message that's like, hey. Come get a slice, you know what I mean? Go ahead, go ahead. Capture my knight. Knights, not worth as much as a bishop to begin with, although they might be angling for a little bit of a closed game, you never know. What do you think? What do you think you're doing here? I mean, they're playing a smooth game. That That's something I'll say right out the gate. I don't mind giving them a little bit of that. It makes their bishop weaker to begin with. I'm not going to push them further than that, though, and, and you know that's the case. Um... A couple of different moves you could do here. One would be to get your uh, your queen out of there so you can move the knight. One would be to move your bishop back. You can't move your bishop back. If you, if you do this, hold on, hold on. Hold the front door. I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm, I've lost where I'm at in the, in the opening here. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's normally a, an opening that I like here. You know what? We're going to do a little preemptive move. That might not be the best thing for, for tempo, but it's what I'm going to do right now. This is a, a very close game of chess, though. We are clearly not playing against somebody who is just like Melvin City. So this is a tough one because we can capture the knight, which is in theory fine. Um, they would probably take with the pawn. So let me walk it through. I take their knight. They might take my bishop. If they take my bishop, that's fine. I take the bishop with my knight so that I can get the pawn easily. Yeah, you know, I, I don't mind it. For the present moment, I don't mind it. And now I'm thinking... So we just traded knights. I honestly think I prefer... It's tough. I do kind of like moving my knight up to uh, d5. Is it not a bad position for it? But I also don't mind capturing this. Even though it doubles up on our pawns. It opens our bishop out, which saves us a move to, to free it in the future. Um... It's an interesting play, let's put it that way. Maybe, maybe this is foolish, but it's, it's how we're going to do it here. If you want to capture my knight, then so be it. They're, they're going real quick here. Now that's the frightening part for me. Now I'm like, dude, we could threaten mate with queen to f3. But th I think that loses us a, uh, a pawn at the end of the day. So we're going to actually just, just take. I'm happy with this. We, we have uh, two bishops, whereas they have a bishop and a knight. They have maybe an added bonus in terms of pawn structure. I think we're way further developed than them right now, though. Again, I'm not a chess expert. Uh, I, was, I was pretty good as a child. Um, but it's been a long time. Honestly, at this point, you might laugh it up. But I think I would be inclined to try to pressure their queen... Um, via something like... Like, they're going for a queenside castle. I, I, I like our current open game position, so I actually really like the idea of, of hitting them with one of these. Um, that way, we're trading pieces to, to kind of keep the game open and simplify, because I think we're ahead right now. I mean, we're a pawn ahead. It's, you know, it's a weird play, but it's not necessarily a bad play. Because they're going to be sacrificing their king side um, to begin with here. We 
could move here, but then they just move the knight uh, pawn up one. If we move here, we have the ability to like reveal the bishop's line for a little bit of an attack. This is kind of more of a traditional position for it, but I, I think I'll just leave it here for now. We're getting into the, more of like the tactics portion of the game, I would say. So, um, I don't mind our, our current setup, quite frankly. And I would probably say, like, their uh, black piece bishop is, is pretty locked down. I actually very much like maybe something like this. Because, I, again, I want to keep trading them down. We have a pawn advantage, and our bishops, in such an open game, in theory, our bis uh, bishops should give us a pretty great chance to kind of control um, a lot of space on the board. But this is the hardest game of chess I've ever played in Clubhouse, I think. To the best of my knowledge, at least. And I'm just kind of winging it. <laughs> I'm doing my best. Um, I definitely would not say that our opponent is in a bad position. Um, and that bishop is so hard to develop. The, the thing is, we're probably going to want to start... Uh, attacking the king side, well, I guess they're queen side pawns, but the castle side pawns of the enemy here. If we can break down their defense there, like obviously it would be a dream to get uh, our um, our h1 bishop to h8, sorry, h1 rook to h8, which is the top left corner. Um, but that they're not, th this person is too good to fall into a simple trap like that, I think. We'll see though. It's a genuine game. I'm, I'm stoked to got a genuine game of chess happening here. Very close. I, again, I would give myself the piece and the positional advantage right now. Not by much, though. We're talking like, you know, if I was a grandmaster, we'd be we'd start to tighten the the noose here. Let's see. You got 13 seconds left. Uh, it's an interesting move for sure. Definitely opens up. Uh, what I would say is a great position for us to to get this rook on the open file. My expectation is they will probably take. This, um, it, it doesn't really bother me because then if they take again with the pawn, um, we still have complete control of this file. So I would I would say now, to be honest with you, I love this move right here. So what are we doing here? We're setting up for an opportunity to move our c3 bishop to uh, to f6, which would pin the the rook. We would force the king to be in check and move, and then we would sack the bishop to take the rook. Let's see if they see it. We, we got a little bit of a spicy play to begin with. It's a weird one, because we could use the rook to put the king in check. But it kind of puts us into stalemate territory. Here's what I would do first. I would do this. And the reason for that is not to capture the pawn, but rather we can use our pawn that's on uh, e4 uh, to threaten. I understand the move, don't get me wrong. We still, I, to the best of my knowledge, we don't have a, a mate set up here. But we could start to erase them pretty quick I want to see what I'll do or what you'll do if I do this because you can't capture it's a very interesting game of chess right now <laughs> I think we have actually continued our advantage but I'm interested to see what they're going to do here it puts the ball in their court no doubt about that Again, by the way, if we start checking them on the 7th uh, file and the 8th file, or rank, I can't remember, um, we might be able to get their bishop for free. 
But it's it's unlikely. It would force them to make a major mistake. Or let me rephrase. We would only get that piece if they make a major mistake. And and in general, you know, when you're playing against a decent opponent, you don't want to hinge your whole strategy around like, you know, fishing for unforced errors. Okay, it's an interesting play. Um, this might be a situation where I might suggest that uh, a check is in order. It's a bit weird, but let's do it. No, I actually don't like it, because they'll just move here, which creates a, a bit of a difficult situation for us. Um, quite frankly, I don't mind just moving it back one. Or even two, for that matter. With 14 seconds left, I think we're going to take the coward's route. We're going to move it back two. Although, oh, if I moved it back one, I bet I could have baited um, their their rook pawn to move one more to challenge me. And then we'd have a sweet pin on the rook with the white uh, piece bishop as well. Oh, man, that would have been a doozy. <laughs> but again, you'd be forcing them to make an unforced error in the process. So I think we did the right thing. I think, I think the check would have actually left us in a worse position. Although, admittedly, we would have gotten two pawns out of it. But I think we're in a good enough position to... To kind of flex on him for now. They're more under the gun than we are. And if we can just start working these um, these pawns down and then trade pieces, we, we have a really solid endgame setup. You know, that's something I didn't consider. What if you move the piece up one? Yeah, very interesting. It's not an en passant situation, though I, I know you would love it to be. We might be able to get... Uh, it's touchy. There is actually a mate in here. Um, because we have such control over the, uh, over the center line pawn. I think there is a mate. It requires them to make a mistake, and it does leave our back line in a <laughs> spicy spot. Like, this is a real dangerous situation, because if we leave our situ our kings uh, king in the situation they're in right now, they could easily be mated by a single rook. But for now, like, this is, this is a position that I would look to as being fairly advantageous, for sure. I gotta run it through in my head because you're gonna challenge this bishop, which is fine. I think the knight to there is actually a really strong move. Then I would go rook down one, check. You would be forced to move somewhere. Now go rook one more, rook one more. It's not actually a mate. Whether it's good is uh, something that remains to be seen, I suppose. Um. I at least want to keep the tempo. I want to kind of force them into a into a rougher situation. Wamp wamp. Wamp wamp. Wamp wamp. Wamp wamp. Okay. So you will probably move into a position where the knight will have coverage next. The dream for me would be to leave this position as is. It's real tight, though. Um, I, th I think we maybe made a misstep earlier, quite frankly. I don't think they're going to move the knight. If they did, though, it would be Pog City. It's like the second check. I don't think it gives us enough. And it leaves our, our rook in a bit of a spicy... It leaves our king in a bit of a spicy spot, honestly. That's the scary part for me. Um, what's the harm? No harm, necessarily. Let's just see what you do. I kind of need to buy some time anyway on the clock. Yeah, that was, that was as expected. I'm going to hit you with some hotness, okay? What if I hit you with one of these? 
<laughs> okay, you know what? I would say that's probably the right move. Now, this the next thing I'll say is that I think we're starting to fall into a position where I actually wouldn't mind sack towning a bishop to open up the king side while well, the queen side. But it's a little <laughs> it's a little hot. Um so I think we're going to fall back a little bit here. I, th I think you forced my hand to fall back a little bit. I'll tell you, this is uh, probably the most hotly anticipated or hotly contested clubhouse games chess you'll ever see with a random. <laughs> and uh, I got to be honest as well, I'm here for it. So what, are, what am I analyzing right now? Well, you really only get 60 seconds per move, which I actually think is a nice move for casuality. Um, and, and we're just going to fall back here, quite frankly. Just the question of where to fall back. We need to find a way to move the... Um, yeah, I think we're going all the way back to the back row. We need to find a way to move the rook off of their current position. By the way, I would train or trade, I should say, my my knights, or their knight for my bishop any day of the week at this point. So this becomes a much more interesting game of, of chess right now, without a doubt. I would love to say that we have the advantage, because I, I genuinely think we do. Mighty interesting, I'll tell you that much. Kind of gave up a free pawn there, huh? I did give up a free pawn there. I'd like to request more time, please. <laughs> we have check into a pawn capture, but I don't really like it. And I don't really want to lose my bishop here. I think we let them take the pawn. I don't know if I would have done that one personally, but... Check. Unless I'm missing something, they just traded their rook for a bishop, which is kind of insane to me. Um, so now you would probably start to hit him with like a... Like, are you going to... Oh, you, I see. They're going for this. Which is not necessarily like a bad move, but if you think I'm going to let you fork this... Uh, you, you lost your dang mind, okay? Um, so I, I do exposing the bishop to attack would be nice, but not if it leads to a fork. So I would suggest probably first try yeah. something like this, which will then allow us another capture. And it really like it can't be overstated. The further into this game that you get, the the more uh, the more important stuff like this is going to be. So the worst thing for me, without a doubt, and this is a big thing, we can't move this and then expose this because the bishop could put us in check and then they could capture my rook uh, uncontested, which is, uh, you know, really stupid. So uh, instead of doing that, I definitely think we should move. It's hot because we the knight will be under duress here. Um... This is actually a very dangerous situation. Because we're two moves away from being placed in check by the knight, which is really bad. So I would actually say we just have to move off of the... Um, as unfortunate as it is, I think we have to move off of the black pieces. So that we don't... Oh, and then we still allow the bishop to be taken, dude. I just wasn't even thinking straight at all. Um... I'm trying to think if there's a better way out of this. That one, that's a pretty major blunder on my part. So you, I'm assuming you're going to cap. And then, like, it's it's very close. It's a very close game here. That's a really strong position for their knight to be. Um, but we do have an advantage. 
I'm just trying to think of like how how to press it. What we would love to do now is start working their pawns over. And he's going to try to do the same to me. And they do have a mate um, in principle, if not practically speaking. Yeah, we, we got a... It's a very spicy situation right now. They got great protection. I would actually... At this point, I would probably favor us to lose. Um, but it's... It's not an easy... Choice. This forces their king to move up. Or or they'll maybe make an attack. Because our bishop is a very weak piece right now. It's very hard for us to leverage it. My next moves are probably going to be to move... Um, this is F, sorry. Yeah, we move F up one so that our king can go here and we can unpin our bishop, which gives us a little bit of extra protection for sure. We do always have some checks at our disposal, but, you know, you'd prefer not to... <laughs> it, it would actually be really nice for me if you would willfully move your, your rook. I would sack town, because what, we have... No, we have the same amount of pawns. It's really close. It's a really close game. I got the bishop versus the knight. But I don't know. I feel like the, the black pieces are able to defend their pawns a little bit more easily due to the king's development. But it's, it's mighty close. Does the bishop even beat the knight here? I mean, it, it's debatable. So if you move knight to... Oh, to there, huh? It's a wild move. Um, I assume you will probably put me in check. Through any variety of different means. So we need to find a way to... I mean, really... It's... We want to go here. When we go here, he will... Um, well, actually, you know what? He can capture the piece. It's a question of whether we, we think that that's good for us or bad for us. Because if he captures this pawn, we have no defense. Would I trade my knight for the bishop? I'd prefer not to. Um, so he's going to go up a pawn on us here pretty much no matter what. It's just a question of what pawn. I think, I think we move here. And I, I think black now has us right where they want us, honestly. If I were him, I would capture the pawn with the knight. I'm kind of forced to capture because we can't defend our other pawn without that. He will capture me and put me in check. And then he's going to have a really good position to start assaulting my uh, my queenside pieces while simultaneously develop developing the pawns that are on his, uh, his king side. Losing the the rook for the bishop after we got the bishop for the rook, or vice versa. This is not what I expected, quite frankly. Um, I think this is a great opportunity for us to count our blessings. <laughs> and our king actually has a great amount of control right now. Um, I think the worst thing we could do is move this pawn up. I don't think that's in the cards for us. It's a very interesting game. Is there a, is there a draw offer? <laughs> um, truth be told, again, it's getting a little tight here. Truth be told, I don't mind pressuring the rook into a trade. Check. We're not gonna do that. If you want to catch me in a draw, you can catch me in a draw. But I'm not gonna move away from from the support that I have on the king side. That prevents the rook from... Ah, but he's going to probably go there. Do we mind? He takes, I take. There's probably a better move somewhere involved. We really don't want to let him get in behind. That's kind of the problem right now. So if if he moves his, his rook... Um, actually, you know what? Now I'm realizing the, the move that he wants to do is definitely use the rook to check. Um, at which point he gets to capture a free pawn. So I'm going to, this doesn't really help us. In fact, that it doesn't really hinder us. I would say that our, our best move is a tough one. 
So step no. one, maybe throw him a little rattle. Maybe try to rattle him just slightly. See see if we can... Okay, that's... We, it's a good player. You can't deny it. Our, our queen side here, is, which I've called king side about 30 times, is about to get royally screwed. The real problem is this pawn not getting to the end. You're going to check. I, I think, honestly, we're in, like, resignation territory. I think we have to keep the pressure on like this. We knew that was coming. I mean, we told you 20 times. But by placing this piece here, it does make him... It makes it a lot harder for him to get his piece to the end. Um, but we're, we're at a pawn disadvantage here. Very interesting choice. Um, I mean, we pretty much have to. There's no way we can protect the piece. I would say, looks something like this, but black has a, a distinct advantage at this point. Like this, in, in a tournament, this would probably be like a white surrender right now. Now, all I'll say is I think that they're getting maybe a little greedy. You might disagree. But I think there's a little greed involved here. And now we have uh, what we in the business call a race. <laughs> I think they wanted to get a piece to a pawn to the end quickly. However, um, they, they found themselves in times of trouble. Mother Mary, comfort me. So, really the only thing that matters... Is, is beating them to the end, right? They will not want to sack that pawn. They will protect that pawn, and that'll give us... I mean, you can't move it down at this point, so, so what do you want to do? How you, what are you going to do? Yasser Sirawan, acclaimed U.S. Grandmaster... I must have read your Endgame theory book about 75 times as a as a 12-year-old. I'm counting on you to carry me to victory in this one. It's still a very close game. I really do think that Black squandered an advantage with its with its bizarre predilection towards this uh, H-side uh, pawn. And now I know what you're going to do. You're going to go for that one, which is fine. I understand why you would. Um, so what we're going to do is just start pushing it. Now, the thing is, as soon as we get an advantage in pushing it, um, it's very hard to stop the push without sacrificing your rook, basically. So they're going to have to take it all the way to the back line. They're going to get in front of it. Gotta be honest with you. It's looking a little dangerous. What are you gonna do? Just making sure we can still stop it. Because it is interesting. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You're like, make the queen, you get the rook. But can we stop them from making a queen in the process? I don't know, honestly. I'm just trying to see if we can make our own queen. It'll cost us a move is the thing. It might cost us two moves. I think we start here. Promotion. I think you start there for certain. And if we have to sack, then we sack. That's, it's as simple as that. You know that's coming. Then you're going to move that one down. And then we buy ourselves the slightest bit of time. 
It takes me four moves. I think we might still lose, believe it or not. The only thing is you can't move that up because you'll be in check. Because you'll be in check. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, it's not check anymore, huh? You know what? They played a they played an I'm amazing okay. game here. I'm not upset at all if they win. This has been an incredible game of the people's game. Oh, they I thought they could take it right away, honestly. Check. That's a good move. It's a good move. Check. We should lose now. Well, if you want to capture it and get a draw, then by all means. <laughs> That's up to you. I leave that one up to you. Check. Had a feeling that was en route. Check. I actually let it happen. I, I'm stunned. Why would I let it happen by blocking the rook? Because I lost focus, that's why. All right. Oh, we, we got problems, lads. <laughs> we got sincere issues. Okay, I mean, this way, if you don't mind, I'm going to move this way. And then if you don't mind, I'm going to move uh, up here. We should lose this 10 out of 10 times. But we gotta keep it running. How about one of these? Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> just do it, do it, just do it. Do it, it would be funny. Dude, it would be so funny if you just did it. I'm trying to see like how we get toasted here. I would like to pass my turn. I know you're you're looking for the pin. The pin's not gonna work here. I'm trying to see if we could like bait a stalemate. The problem is I don't want to give up a king position. Because, like, I, I don't want their king to be able to move up here. So as bizarre as it sounds, I do think we put the ball in our court by doing something like this. Maybe stretch out their thinking patterns a little bit. We're basically playing for a draw right now. In, in the most benevolent of all universes... Perhaps black makes just such a colossal mistake that we find ourselves unperturbed. I will tell you straight up, I don't think that you try for the check. I think the check gives up control of this side of the board, which we desperately need because they... they in theory, they if we pinned ourselves badly, I think they could mate with just the queen. But in 99.9% .9 of circumstances, they're going to need uh, the king to be able to force us. If their king can't get to where we are, we're, we're making their life harder. Let's put it that way. That's maybe the best we could hope for. <laughs> I feel bad because the, the, the right thing to do, I know it sounds busted, but if this happened in tournament chess, I would have resigned like, you know, a few moves ago. Um, but because this is not tournament chess, we're not going to do that, obviously. Um, we're going we're gonna to play it out to try to get the hardest fought try-hard draw in Clubhouse Games history. But I got to tell you, I'm exhilarated. I'm happy to have played this game. I think we played against a worthy opponent who is, you know, on our level. It was a very even game all the way through. I'm certain we made mistakes, but... You know, most Check. most clubhouse situations are just like a a stomp. Check. Okay, it's an interesting move. By the way, they should be able to get to a position where they can beat us. It's gonna take some creative thinking. 
but it should happen. I mean, like, to be honest, moving the king up one position is really powerful here. What did I tell you? <laughs> um, so we have to move, which is the scary part. But I think if we move here, it's okay. Now, where are you going to go? You're going to do something? Okay, so they're just... I wouldn't say they're baiting me. I think we absolutely... We don't have a choice. We have to go there. Yeah, Check good game. It. Honestly. Um, Ice, you played a great game. If I could give you a commendation, I would. Enjoy, enjoy being a chess shark. I knew this day would come. At least it wasn't due to what I would call a prodigious blunder where you lost your queen. It was a hard-fought game where we got to... You know, let me put it this way. Most games of Clubhouse Games Chess, you ain't seeing an end game. <laughs> so you, you may have seen something you've never witnessed before, but it's always fun to be back. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed the episodes, and I'll see you next time. So yeah.